everybody, it's Charles, your hobby hero, and today I'm going to be showing you how to take care of some foxing on your comics. Before we get started, though, make sure you hit that subscribe button down in the bottom corner. I do appreciate it. Uh, I put out regular content about the hobbies I love the most. These particular types of videos do take a long time to edit and put together, so if you do like this kind of content, please leave a like button down there. Let me know that you guys want more content like this as well. So the book I'm going to be working on today is... X-Men 131, first cover appearance of the White Queen, second appearance of Dazzler, third appearance of Kitty Pride, just an overall well-rounded, iconic X-Men book, and it has some of the worst foxing on it that I have ever seen. So I'm going to walk you through my process on here. I do want to let you know this is not a step-by-step -step, uh, tutorial. This just gives you an idea of the processes that are out there. I encourage you to do your own research, do your own experimentation, because there are variations based on your setup, based on the humidity of where you live at, things that can change this. And I don't want you guys trying to replicate my exact step-by-step -step procedures because you may end up destroying a book that I do not want you guys to end up destroying. So if you do ever have questions, feel free to hit me up on my Instagram, which will be listed up here. I always answer questions to the best of my ability, but I do want you to know that this is going to be a very general walkthrough just to show you what's possible with some of the processes that are out there. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump on in. All right, so here we have our X-Men 131, great cover, uh, completely covered in foxing stains. Uh, gets its name from the reddish-brown fox-like color. Uh, harder to tell on the back. There's a little white strip on the bottom that does have the foxing in it as well. Uh, but if you open up that back cover, the entire inside cover uh, is covered in those foxing spots. Uh, so we're going to have to treat uh, both sides of the back cover as well. Uh, just to flip through the pages real quick, just to make sure there's no staining on the interior pages. Uh, you usually won't find uh, foxing on the newsprint paper. It is usually unique just to the cover pages, um, just due to the makeup of that paper. As you can see, the interior is going to have to be treated on the front cover as well. So we're going to have to do our dry cleaning first, uh, which means we've got to support our book for that dry cleaning. Uh, we use a magazine backer board to support the staples so they do not get pressed in. And I'll put a 65 pound piece of paper behind the cover while I'm working on the cover, just to add an extra little support to that cover. The clean makeup round, and we're going to use that to wipe away the surface debris pretty dirty book this go around a lot of times uh, by this stage we've already got it relatively clean but as you'll see there's quite a bit of dirt that comes off of the front cover and the back while you're doing this uh, make sure you're working away from the center uh, towards those edges you don't want to, to tear uh, or catch on any of those edges I usually do the full edge and then work around the middle so yeah filthy stain we move to probably my favorite tool, which is the absorbing uh, sponge. It's going to pull a ton of dirt up. Uh, you can also use it pretty aggressively as an eraser on some of the colored or like lighter colored areas on books. So, like say that yellow there had some dirt on it. You can't really hit it with a regular artist eraser, uh, but you can be a bit more aggressive with the absorbing eraser, uh, taking it all over the front there. And again, you'll see, I mean, you can see it there in my hand, like just how much dirt this will pull up. Um, it's just, again, uh, one of the most aggressive tools you can use on the book uh, for the best results. Now, I am going to go over all the white on here with an artist eraser now. Uh, a lot of these white areas are dirty. Uh, you'll notice later on the before and after pictures how much whiter and brighter the book gets. Uh, it's not going to do anything to the foxing, though, which, you know, it is going to pull up a lot of the dirt, which is going to allow us to get to the foxing that might be underneath some of the dirt there. But we're really just cleaning up the whole book uh, as far as what we can do on the dry cleaning side first, which is your traditional methods. And you'll be able to see how much is still left afterwards. Uh, cleaning over here in the cages. I don't know if these are like stripper cages or if these people are prisoners. 
I'm not sure. They can't really tell if they're having a good time or a bad time. <laughs> Clean up Storm's hair a little bit there. Quite a bit of white. Um, it's obviously not the same attire that the White Queen wears these days. That would be a lot less uh, white to a race <laughs> based on her current attire in the MCU. Uh, barcode on the new stand version of the book. Uh, and then just cleaning up again all these little white areas here. There's a lot of colors you have to avoid on this one. Uh, reds, yellows, and oranges come up very easily. So you got to be very careful when you're working with an artist eraser on those particular ones. Back takes no time at all. Just that little strip of white down there to get cleaned up. Again, not going to remove any of the stain, but take care of the dirt that's on there. So now our dry cleaning is finished. Um, flip it back over. Uh, make sure you clean up all the debris. Uh, you're going to have to do that periodically just so dust doesn't get stuck on the surface of the book. Because a lot of these treatments, if there is any debris still on the surface, it can really make difficult impressions to get out uh, of those particular, book, uh, particular issues. Um, so uh, we're going to do first step here We uh, is going to be our uh, hop method, our heat overlay press. Uh, we're going to basically overlay uh, a sheet of hydrogen peroxide soaked printer paper. Uh, we're going to smooth that out over the book just like that. Make sure there are no air bubbles, no pockets, no wrinkles or folds in there. It will press into the book and with that extra moisture will make a very semi-permanent to permanent indentation on the book so make sure you have it nice and flat uh, we're going to take a, a second sheet of copy paper put it over top of that and we're going to set a hundred pound card stock on top of that uh, and there would normally be a magazine backer board I already had it set over on the press um, and then we will press it and then come back uh, to check the results. Now this is not going to pull the color staining out of it, uh, but when it comes to like uh, stains that involve um, actual like growth, uh, you kind of have to pull some out sometimes. So that's why I usually will start with this particular method because it will actually adhere and stick to some of the particles in the paper and pull those out. Uh, we're also going to do an interior um, overlay uh, so it can actually pull from the back part of it now I go about this really weird way for the camera it but much simpler if I had just turned the book and come from the opposite approach to get it lined up here but you know, trying to make it look fancy for you guys and more or less uh, fail <laughs> uh, but again make sure very important to get these laid flat uh, smooth out all the wrinkles that are on there so that those do not press into the book for uh, obvious reasons there. Just create, at, at worst create, or at best rather create more work. Um, also should have put the other piece of paper on top of the book before I started doing this. I didn't damage the book, but I would not normally scrape across the cover of a book. It's not gonna help you at all there, but. Um, again, you got your copy paper on top. Smooth it over again, our 100 pound paper and our magazine backer board. And we'll go back in for another heated press. We've got our results here. I do repeat these processes on the back side of the book. You don't really need to see it all over again, uh, but it will pull here and you can really see how adhesive this gets uh, here. I mean, it's almost like pulling a Band-Aid off. So you gotta be very, very careful as you're pulling that from the back side there. It's hard to tell the difference between these steps. Um, I do take pictures in between each one of the phases and there's definitely a noticeable difference, but this step here is not going to pull a lot of the color out of a foxing book here. That'll be the for the next phase here, which is actually going to be the light treatment on the book. Uh, check out the back there just to check the results uh, that we've had so far. Pull out our backing board 
because uh, we are going to open the book at the middle spine and set it down in our light box. Now in the light box, we've got it spread out. We're going to treat the interior and exterior cover uh, with that hydrogen uh, peroxide misting. Uh, it's about a three hour treatment on each page that we are treating. Uh, and you have to mist it periodically to keep the pages kind of hydrated um, and keep that peroxide on there to activate for that whitening. We are not whitening the pages this time around though, so that saves us a lot of time, even though they could definitely benefit from it. So as you can see, uh, even after the first two treatments, there are still some sections uh, where you, there's very visible foxing. We've had a lot of improvement. You can see how much brighter the whites are, uh, how much more the yellows and reds pop. Uh, they're still a little bit back in that very top corner there by my thumb. Uh, and then on the inside, there's still quite a bit left in there, especially on the very interior of the spine. Um, they just didn't get a very good um, amount of light on it, so I had to retreat that one as well. So from here on out, it's going to be light treatments on it. However, you have to let the book rest a long time before you treat it again. Or there's a second method that we're going to use that we haven't done on the channel here before, which is a combination of the first two methods that we did here. Uh, as you can see, the book inside there is just the front cover. It actually has an overlay, a hydrogen peroxide soaked overlay on top of it, which will actually reduce the amount of actual light that it is getting. And then from there, it'll go and we'll get it uh, humidified and ready for our final press. It's important to note too, if I ever humidify a book, I do preheat the press so that it is pressing from both sides uh, to make sure that it evaporates most of the moisture out of the book while it's pressing. So now that the final press is done, you can see just how much of a difference there is on this book. Uh, again, all the colors are going to pop uh, considerably. Um, they're actually, as I'm looking through the, the video edit here, in the black. You can see when the light hits it right there, uh, right above the hands of that, that figure down there. Uh, there's still a few spots left that I had to go back and retreat again. Obviously, could not see them in the black except when the light hit it just the right way. But aside from that, all the other spots came out wonderfully. And again, uh, no color loss, no brittle pages. I know I get a lot of questions about uh, the pages being brittle. So we got our before and after. Front cover is the big one right there. Obviously night and day difference. Um, interior cover, all the foxing has gone out of the interior. That blue has brightened up a little bit there. Not as noticeable on the back. The colors are clearer, more vibrant than the interior cover. Again, all the foxing came up with those treatments. That so there you go, guys. Those are the finished results. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Do you guys think I should send this off to get graded, or should I leave it as it is? Uh, if you guys want future updates like this, make sure you have that notifications bell hit as well. Until next time, though, guys, Hobby Hero, out.